Good evening. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your son to be able to come and hear your word and fellowship your presence. Thank you, Lord, for what Jesus did through it, for us, that he gave us eternal life, everlasting life. We give you all the praise and glory. We have abundant life, and we thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's go over our Bibles here to Luke chapter 5. Now, the scripture says here, being in verse 15, but so much the more than when a fame are brought to him, and great multitudes came together to heal and be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself in the wilderness and prayed. It came to pass a certain day that he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors laws sitting about which came out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, the power of the Lord's presence to heal them. And behold, men brought a man man taking palsy and sought means they might bring him and lay him before him. When they could not find out what way they might bring him because of multitude, they went on the house top and let him down and tied him his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said not, Man, thy sins forgive thee. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus perceived their thoughts and answered, What reason are Whether Whether Jesus say, Thy sins will be saved and rise up and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Satan is sick of Paul's ass, saying, Arise, took up thy couch, go in thy house. And immediately he rose up before them, took up where he laid, and upon his own house glorified God. Now here's this man that's crippled, and these four guys that took him where Jesus is at. They got the house, they couldn't get in because the house is filled with people. Well, someone got the idea, let's just take off the roof and let him down. And they did so. Think about this, the tenacity of these people to do this. But nevertheless, by doing so, the man got healed. And what Jesus said to go, you know, Jesus told him to go home, go back to your house. He didn't want him to stay in there. And you can tell by the way the crowd, the people was in that house, how they were talking, how they were acting. They're, they're real cynical. And they're trying, trying to catch Jesus on something. You know, a lot of times... You know, it's going to happen to you in your Christian life. You're going to start believing God for your healing or prosperity or whatever. I started out with like 1 Peter 2.24, by whose stripes you were healed. And again, I thought everybody would be thrilled to hear it. I, that, you know, I was, the time I heard that scripture, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I was thrilled with it. Didn't know what stripes meant. Didn't know there was a first or second Peter. I just recently got born again. And I started sharing with other people. Oh boy, I got all kinds of things said to me. It's like, you know, coming up against a stone wall. They're just, no, yeah, born again people, spirit filled even. You know, Jesus said this, go here to Mark chapter four. And let's hear what Jesus said here. He said here in verse, in verse um, 23, and this is when he taught to serve so as the word. And so the scripture says here, and if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said, take heed what you hear, but the measure you met with all should be measured unto you. And to you that hear should be more given. Then she goes on and says, For he that hath to him should be given, and him that hath not should be taken even that which he hath. And Luke's account said, Take heed how you hear, what you hear. So Jesus is telling us these, both these, uh, they're both on the service of the word, Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 4. So Jesus said, Take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear. It does make a difference what you listen to as a believer. Now we're in this world, so we're going to hear doubt and unbelief probably every day. But nevertheless, we want to focus on hearing God's word. You know, the Bible said there in Luke chapter 5 that they came to hear and be healed. Luke chapter 5 verse 1, that was verse 15, said they came to hear the word of God. Now, if, they'll, if they come to hear the word and believe what he said and act upon it, they'll receive their healing. Now, when I first heard 1 Peter 2, 24, as far as I know from that point on, I never wanted to hear anything else about Anything negative about healing. I don't want to hear God doesn't know he's healed. Healing passed away. Look what happened to Sister Jones. She didn't, you know, she loved the Lord. And there's no one had more faith in the world than she did. And she died, but, you know, with whatever. Well, you know, if she was born again, thank God she wanted to be a Jesus. But it does make a difference what you listen to. Now, again, we're in this world. We can't isolate ourselves from people. We're not supposed to. But we can choose who we listen to when it comes to ministering God's word. And I just made my mind up. I'm not going to listen to anything else. I mean, I just recently got 1 Peter 2, 24 at that time. And that was all brand new to me. I never heard anything like this. And I started building my Christian life on that. The night that I heard 1 Peter 2, 24, I told somebody in that church, some guy, I said, as we, as this dismissed, you're leaving the church based on that scripture, based on what I just heard from that verse, that by his stripes you were healed. I told him, this Christian brother, I said, well, I'll never be sick again. I, I Within an hour, I got sick. I got sick before I got home from church after I just heard that. It was like a midweek Wednesday night service when I heard that verse. Well, but for some reason, I kept saying, buy straps, I'm healed. And got sick again, 
Kept saying that, got sick again. I mean, repeatedly, get over something, they get hammered something else. Well, but fortunately, thank you, thank you, Jesus, I kept saying that. And see, there'll be trials in life. There'll be, you know, or tests or whatever you want to call them, that Satan will challenge the word. You know, Mark chapter 4, that's what that's all about. That when you hear the word, Satan comes immediately. Well, I just heard 1 Peter 2, 24, and boldly decreed, you know, that I'm never be sick again and got sick before I got home. Well, Satan comes. Jesus said Satan comes immediately to take the word out. He uses affliction and persecution, cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things. If they enter in, they'll choke the word. Now, how are we going to keep them entering in? Keeping our mouth filled with God's word? That was one of the best things I did at the time was just keep saying by his stripes I'm healed. Even though I didn't know what stripes meant. Even at the time, I, you know, I couldn't have found 1 Peter 2, 24. Just scripturally literate when I got born again. Well, but as a process of time. I begin to be taught God's word. Listen to ministers teach God's word. I mean, when I heard Brother Hagin say he hadn't been sick and hadn't had an aspirin since 1933, that, that got my attention. I don't know about you. That, 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 you know, and I started sharing his cassette tapes. We like CDs today with other people. Oh, boy, man, I got all kinds of mm, things said about it. Well, and, and, you know, mean things said about him. But, you know, it thrilled me. I wanted to just, I wanted to run with that, thanking God, hey, thank God for divine health. Thank God someone's preaching it. Thank God someone's teaching it. And I became all ears to this. I want to listen. I'm not listening to anyone that tells me it's passed away. It's not that I love them. It's not that I wouldn't try to help them out, because I will. And I think I can prove that. But I'm not listening to them teach God's word. No way. And here, God doesn't always heal, because that seed to get planted is going to grow up a weed. And many of their ministers, you know, end up saying that. that most Christians believe God can heal if it's his will. And many Christians believe God puts sickness on you to teach them. Actually, God put our sickness and diseases upon Jesus, and he sent the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. He doesn't use sickness to teach us them. He doesn't put sickness on us. He put our sickness upon and diseases upon Jesus. Because the Bible said in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24, that God did that. Just as much as God put our sins upon Jesus, he put our sickness and diseases upon Jesus. Actually, Jesus was beaten before he took our sins. So he took our sick diseases first. And, but that wasn't taught us, or wasn't taught me. I mean, I never heard in church that Jesus didn't take our sins. But I'd always heard that God doesn't always heal. God gets glory out of you being sick. You never know what God will do. God can heal if it's his will. You never know. If you do pray, you should pray. If it be thy will, Lord, heal me. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus never prayed for one person that way. He never told one person, well, I can't heal this. God put this on you. Oh, I can't heal this. God put this on your child. God made your child this way to teach you a lesson. He never talked that way. He never told someone they need to quit doing this and quit doing that, and, and then, then I'll heal you. He never scolded someone of what they've been eating, what they've been drinking, how they've been living, and that's why you're sick. No. He ministered healing to them. If they just believe him, they could receive. But what happened was we were taught, or at least I was, that God took our, Jesus took our sins. But I was never taught Jesus took my sickness and disease. Not until that night that I heard Pastor Elton say, well, like, he was just preaching. He said, well, well, like 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by whose stripes you were healed. I, that's why I jumped out on that right away. I never knew that. Not, up until that time, I guess I'm, I'll get healed when I get to heaven. But no, this, is, this puts it in the past tense. That if I could believe Jesus took my sins, I could also believe he took my sickness and diseases. Now, I sinned after I heard and received Christ my Savior. Probably every day, you know. I mean, just thinking of something you should be thinking about could be sin. But thank God for the blood of Jesus always cleanses us. Amen. Well, and we're not to sin, okay? So, you know, some people really fight for, them for that. But anyway, you know, to make sure that, you know, that you can't sin. Well, the person that said that, they sin. I mean, to him that does do good, does not to him it's sin. Anything's not of faith is sin. Make one, break one commandment, you're guilty of all. I mean, we've all done that. Probably did that this morning. Well, what helps is to know that we're the righteous of God in Christ, we're complete in Christ, and the blood of Jesus always cleanses us from one sin. And we're not to sin. We're told not to. But people do it more than they realize. Well, but that doesn't do away with our salvation. That doesn't mean we're not saved. No, it just simply means we, we, we did, that we just sinned then. And when we did, we didn't become our righteous. We're always righteous because of what Jesus' blood did for us. And when it comes to healing, people make bring up someone that didn't get healed, which is terrible. Someone didn't receive their healing, died in that condition, is terrible. I almost died. I know what that's like. You know, you're just fading away each day, getting weaker and weaker and weaker and less weight and less weight, no, not even interested in eating or anything else or pumping all this toxic stuff in here. 
try to kill the disease? Well, what we need to realize is that <clears throat> Jesus took our sick disease. And thank God for medical science. Helps everybody out. Praise the Lord. Anything good, I believe it came from God. James 1.17. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Come down to the Father of lights. I mean, if two aspirin causes a person's toe not to heal it, not to hurt anymore, or tooth or whatever, hey, thank God for it. Amen. But there is divine healing. And we need to know, with, just like with Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, just by knowing those scriptures, we just know it's not God's will for us to be sick, that we're not waiting for him to heal us. What we want to do is convince ourselves this belongs to me in Christ Jesus. What's going to help us is constantly hear the word being taught about divine healing and divine health. And knowing that God wants me to have good health, and if a person's sick, that God wants them to receive their healing. And so it's important that we take heed what we listen. It is to me. I mean, ever since that night, as far as I know, I never would listen to ministers who said God doesn't always heal. Now, you may, you know, be caught in some situation where you have to be on the, you know, somebody on the radio or something like that, and you realize, oh, I'm not listening to this. Because it can be real toxic. Doesn't mean the person's not saved. Doesn't mean the minister doesn't love the Lord. Doesn't mean the minister's not called. It simply means they don't know anything about healing. You know, I don't know anything about end time prophecy. You know, leave that up to people that, all the people that know everything about it or seem to think they do. No, but building my life on that. Begin to take God. Now, I kept getting hammered with sickness. But I knew I need to keep saying this. For some reason, I just knew I need to keep saying, by his straps, I'm healed. That himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. Later on, I'm going to get Isaiah 53, 4, and 5, and Matthew 8, 17. Now I can link them all together. Now I got more verses. And that's what we do. We build our life on those promises and those verses. That we see ourselves accordingly how the Word of God sees us and says about us. And he, Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear. The measure you measured out should be measured unto you. The time you put the Word of God is that you're investing in you by feeding on the Word every day. We need to feed on the Word. Well, speaking the Word, reading healing scriptures, and listen to people teach it. That builds us up. And you want to invest in you. Because you can't take care of everybody else unless you keep yourself invested. Your greatest investment is in you. Keep yourself built up. And watch what you listen to as a believer. It's very important. I mean, Jesus told that man that got healed, get up and go home. He didn't want him staying there. Because look how those people are talking. And they could have talked this man out of his healing. And many dear people got talked out of their healing. Because they went back to their dead church or wherever, you know, and someone was waiting for them. Man, I know what I ran into. I'm telling people about, I, I ran into people that when I told them I was born and getting saved, they tried to talk me out of that. The church I grew up in. Well, you didn't need to do that, Jesse. You were okay. <laughs> okay. Here I was going to hell and didn't know it. No, that I need to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I thought everybody would be thrilled about that. They weren't. You know, they didn't like the idea I'm leaving the church. I had to leave because look how they're talking. And then you hear people, you know, say God does know he's healed. Well, that can get a seed planted inside of you. And we need to guard our ears about what we listen to. Again, we're, gonna, we're in this world. We're going to hear doubt and unbelief. That's a given. But who we purposely listen to, teach God's word, then we need to be cautious of. I am. Real cautious. Narrow-minded? Very narrow-minded. Yes, strong opinionated? I am when it comes to healing. I still remember that bed and laying in that bed all that time. Well, you see now, we need to always remind ourselves this is what God's Word says. This is something we made up. This is something that came on our idea. No, this is simply what God said. And there'll be challenges, but Satan's going to see to that. He's, he'll see, he's going to test you out see what you put up with, what you'll tolerate. But we stand against him. Thank God doesn't mean we don't take medicine. Praise God for anything that helps you out. Keep on doing it. But the by, by ideas all the time, keep saying, Father God, I thank you by his straps I'm healed. That Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. The Christ says, redeem the curse of the law. And or just always every day, just go right back over your verses of scripture, your healing scriptures. I mean, what's more important than your health? Once you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord, what would possibly be more important than, than a sound mind and healthy body? Because we want to stay upright and mobile until we go and be with the Lord. We're going to do that by building our life on God's Word. We're going to do that, remind ourselves what God's Word says. We're going to do that by being real dogmatic about what we listen to. And keeping ourselves built up on God's Word. And people, they'll, you know, they get upset when they find out that you believe in healing. Again, most believers believe that God can heal if it's His will. Yeah, I mean, He can do anything. All things are possible. And they believe it. And you know, God can heal if it's His will. Well, <laughs> 
Now, see, that's putting it off on him. It's already been done. It's like salvation's already been purchased for us. Healing's already been purchased for us, been given to us. And God wants us to live in divine health. He doesn't want us sick. He promised us, you know, that he wished above all things, that we prosper and be in health. He's a soul prosperous. And he wants us to enjoy life and live pain-free. Like Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, all the power of the enemy, and nothing but hurt you. Well, God doesn't want us hurt physically, emotionally, financially, or any area of our life. But we have this enemy in this world. His name is Satan. And Jesus said, the thief come up. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What we're going to do is we're going to stand against him. What we're going to do is take God's word and apply it to our life. And remind ourselves, this is what God's word says. And I just refuse to have anything else other than what his, his word says. And his word says himself took my infirmities, bear my sickness. Then I'm going to latch hold of that and stay with that. His word says that Jesus became, uh, took our sicknesses. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And not only that, but it was God's plan to do this. So his people could have divine health. God doesn't want anybody sick. No more he wants anybody lost without Jesus. He wants everybody to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And God's not willing that any should perish. And it's not God's will that any believer suffer sick and disease or pain. I mean, because he's our father. God is good. And Jesus said, every good gift and every perfect can come down to the Father of lights. And Jesus said, God is good. So we take scripture like Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, and James chapter 1, verse 17, reminds us of that God is good and good things come from God. Sickness isn't good. Pain isn't good. Poverty isn't good. No more than oppression or oppression or worry or anxiety or stress is good. No, they come to, to rob us of the blessings that Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to us. And Jesus said, if you be natural, know how to give, give good gifts to your children, how much more should every father give good things I ask? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. In Luke chapter 11, Jesus let us know there in verse 12 and 13 that if, if you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your father give the Holy Spirit that I am asked? If you ask, he's not going to give you a serpent. If you ask a piece of bread or an egg, he's going to give you a scorpion. He's going to give you something that's going to hurt you. God, the hurt doesn't come from God. It comes from the enemy. And Satan takes advantage of the believer's ignorance of God's word. I know he did to me. And he comes immediately to take the word out. Well, I heard about healing that night or just that part of that verse of scripture that night. And before I got home, I got sick. See, what's he doing? He's coming immediately to take the word out. He wants me to think, well, I guess it doesn't mean healing because I got sick trying to believe God I was healed. That's what he was hoping for. And that's why he brings those things. And many of their Christians got offended. They started tithing and things didn't work out for them financially or got worse or they you know lost their job or something and that, that came because satan came immediately to take the word out he knows he's got to get that word if he's got any chance he's got to get that word out you got to get that person offended and many of your christians carry offense with them something happened as bad as that was and they carry it through life and those feelings come to all of us folks but what we realize wait a minute this is just satan trying to get me offended and keep me from going on for god and we're told a thousand may fall at one side, ten thousand right in, but it should not come nigh me. And that's how we want to act and talk and think that that's, ta that's terrible that happened to other Christian. Maybe I could have done something to prevent it by praying for him or whatever, giving him the word. But nevertheless, you have to have that kind of determination that has nothing to do with me, Satan. Because he's the one that's going to bring up, look what happened to sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so and pastor so-and-so and bishop, elder so-and-so, deacon no, looking up. They loved the Lord. They were, there was no one more faithful than that. Well, we can't earn any of this. It's free gifts. You know, we can't, we can't bite on that. That's just bait thrown out there for us to try to reel it to fate, Satan to reel us in with offense. Try to get us keep from believing God's word. No things that we don't understand that we don't want to leave those alone. Just know in my heart, I know Jesus took my infirmities and bare my sickness. I want to encourage you. Take Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Matthew 8, 17 and 1 Peter 2, 24 and 3 John verse 2. Read them to yourself every day and memorize them if you haven't already and quote them yourself all the time. Really enjoyed being with you. Hey, you'd like to be, uh, we've got a conference call tonight, 7 o'clock. That's church on the phone. That phone number and access code should be right on our Facebook page. So glad you're able to watch tonight. I'm going to continue, encourage you to continue watching and listening and learning so you know what Jesus did for you. Till next time, it's Brother Rich, I love you. I'm praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.